Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I pose to you a question that may shock you. Are most women going to hell? Pay close attention to this special release from the office of our Imperial Regent, Angelus Domini. This is going to be a three-part series, so keep a close eye out for our upcoming releases. And I quote, I know that my constant critique of women, blacks, Hispanics, cops, militant homosexuals, liberals, religious fanatics, narcissists, millennials, the residents of most third world countries, and your standard run-of-the-mill idiots would lead the casual observer to think that I'm an equal opportunity bigot. But those observers would forget who I am and what my job is, and why the Lord is judging the world as we speak. This is truly hard for me to say, because I love, respect, and admire women deeply. But one cannot genuinely and sincerely love someone, yet not warn them when a known great danger is approaching. So, I must strongly advise you all to listen very carefully and thoughtfully. And if you truly love the women as I do, then share this with them, or you do not love them at all. It is no secret that the writings of the Abrahamic faiths speak very negatively of women. From the sins of Lilith and Eve to Delilah, Salome, and Jezebel, to Potiphar's wife, to the women who seduced angels to fall and leave their first estate, and many others. Unfortunately, too many people cherry-pick the scriptures they wish to believe and ignore the ones that offend them personally, instead of considering those uncomfortable scriptures as personal warnings. This is the point. The Bible and the other Abrahamic writings stress one thing above all others. Thank God. Now let's be clear. Thanking God and His Christ is not meant to be an exercise in feeding deity ego. It is instead a practice meant to ensure that people do not become ingrates and appreciate the blessings they have received. So, if that is priority one taught in the writings, then this pretty obvious how serious a sin in gratitude truly is. Today, we are witnessing women all over the world rise up in solidarity against men and against the world that these men have built for the women they love to give them safety, shelter, nourishment, education, and unlimited opportunities, all for the cause of love. From the very beginning, the men have built shelters, homes, skyscrapers, and cities to give the women they love a protected place to lay their precious heads. The men have hunted, gathered, fished, farmed, created industrial food chains, and water processing systems so that their wives and daughters would never go hungry or thirsty. The men created calculations, wrote books, built schools, libraries, universities, and the internet so that the women they love may be educated in all things. The men studied and experimented to develop medicinal science and built hospitals all over the world to keep the women they love healthy. The men created trade, economics, and industry, and took on hard labor in those industries, so the women they love could have the finest of things. And whenever there was a threat, the men went to war, and they fought, killed, and died to protect the women they love. And what are we seeing today? Females gathering in massive numbers, live and online, to show their contempt for men and the evil patriarchy that these men created out of love, sweat, 
and blood. For a world of ungrateful women who do not appreciate all that has been done for them. Or the men who did it. This is their historical and constant sin of ingratitude. Now put on full display for the world to see. That will send so many of them to hell. But don't think that this is just my opinion. Read it for yourselves. The terrifying scriptures. Khans al-Amul, chapter 22, verse 10. Out of 99 women, one is in paradise, and the rest are in hell. Narrated by al-Bukhari in 1052, it was narrated. The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, I was shown hell, and I've never seen anything more terrifying than it. And I saw that the majority of its people are women. They said, why, O Messenger of Allah? He said, because of their ingratitude. It was said, are they ungrateful to Allah? He said, they are ungrateful to their companions, their husbands, and ungrateful for good treatment. If you are kind to one of them for a lifetime, and then she sees one undesirable thing in you, she will say, I never had anything good from you. Do not make the error of thinking that this is limited to Muslim writings, because even the Jewish Tanakh reveals how rare a good woman is. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies? And the Christian New Testament makes it very clear who will be redeemed. Revelation chapter 14, verses 3 through 5. And they are singing a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one was able to learn the song except the 144,000 having been redeemed from the earth. These are they who have not been defiled with women, for they are pure, these following the Lamb wherever he shall go. These have been redeemed out from men as firstfruits to God and to the Lamb, and in their mouth no lie was not found. They are blameless. Not defiled with women, pure, in their mouth no lie. Men are raised by their fathers and good mothers to be honorable, work hard, and protect and defend those they love. Women are raised to lie, cheat, seduce, and manipulate men and the system, a diabolical art form taught to them by older women. They learn the power of this the first time they pout to their daddy and get their way or lie in school, and with the application of tears, are believed above any boy. In fact, girls and women commit the same crimes as men. But with tears, a lie, and a flirtation or sexual favor, they are punished nowhere near as harshly as men. Simply by virtue of their sex, they're usually able to convince anyone that any crime they have committed was forced by a man. And as it says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, that all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, if women are ungrateful liars, then clearly the Bible confirms the Muslim writings. And for our Lord to find 144,000 people suitable for redemption, then they have to be children who have never been defiled by the wicked teachings of women. Wow, that is a lot to take in. The time to prepare is right now. Give yourself to God and start correcting yourself while you still can. I'm Archbishop William Scoggins, and keep watch for part two. 
There is a lot of passion and hard work put into delivering the truth to you. I don't want any of you to miss out on this. I hope that you'll join with me to get the latest updates as world events are rapidly unfolding. You'll be among the first to hear about it because I know what's coming and I'm not going to suppress any of it from you. Like and subscribe and please continue to show your support. Let's sound the alarm and wake up others before it's too late. Please send your donations to Armageddon Broadcast Network at gmail.com on PayPal. And may God bless and protect all of you. Governments are quickly falling as massive social unrest, disease, pestilence and financial collapse spreads across the globe. Tensions are at their peak as regional wars are breaking out everywhere. With the imminent threat of global thermonuclear war beginning at any moment as the United States and North Korea threaten mutual annihilation. All while Israel's enemies surround them, promising to end their existence. While from the sky, unprecedented numbers of meteors are skimming past Earth and entering our atmosphere. As never before seen, levels of destruction batter the world with apocalyptic weather, fire, droughts, floods, massive earthquakes and simultaneous volcanic eruptions. As a new sun appears in our sky, every major end-time event predicted by Judaism, Christianity and Islam is rapidly unfolding before your eyes. Make no mistake, this is the end. And it's time for you to choose a side. Are you with the enemy who has enslaved and deceived the world, bringing darkness, destruction and death? Or do you stand with the light of the world, the one who brings us light and eternal life, our great and holy King, Lord Rael?